segregation of any kind is actually a very hurting and cruel thing. Believe it or not, I was thinking about the church I came from. I spent a long time in that church and uh, they made me a deacon and they were going to uh, ordain me as a minister. And there was a problem there. See, I was Spanish. I was Spanish and they did not say, they did not say it, but I felt that I was segregated. Let me tell you a couple of experiences because I'll show you from the Holy Scriptures that God segregates nobody. He doesn't look at you, he looks at your heart. Uh, my first wife that I loved and she died, and she died crazy. She is the one that taught me the religion that I know. And she gave me the foundation and I took off. I always remember, I always remember a time that they sent you, you know, for the Feast of Tabernacles. They ordered me to go to Texas for the Feast of Tabernacles because they said that the feast they had was only for Native Americans. Okay, now, I was born in America, South, so that's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyhow, when I got there, my kids were, were, were small, lovely little children at the time, and you had to sign um, some form, and uh, so it said race. So I said, white, the deacon told me, you are not white. You're not white. You're not an American. Well, it did not bug me because we were taught to be bounced around in that church and I guess it didn't hurt me. But you will see from the scriptures that I'm going to give you that God does not discriminate. And I'm going to show you how the doctors of the law of Judaism that some people believe that they are, they, they know the law. I'm going to show you how they miss a couple of scriptures just because they could not accept Gentiles into Judaism, into their synagogue. I have gone to synagogues and I have felt like they looked at me like, I didn't belong there. One of the beautiful things about this church is that you come here, we teach you, we try to bring you up to date in your knowledge of the Bible. You're here, you're one of us. And you know why you're one of us? Because you're one of God's. That's why. Now, uh, I, I'll go to Acts 10 and verses 34 to 35. Verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. But, verse 35, in every nation, whoever they fear him and work and where righteousness is is what is accepted by God. So, you know, we have been here at the Feast of Tabernacles, and the several blacks come here, and they are lovely, adorable people. They have the Holy Spirit. They help us. And uh, we have no difference physically, racially. The difference is that we don't want to hear or see our differences in doctrine. 
as long as we believe the same things, more or less, were, were unified. We are separated not by race, looks, but by religion. You agree? Yes. Okay, very good. Now, my next scripture is in Acts 21. And uh, it's just an example. Uh, let, let me go back. I jumped up the page, I think. That's my last scripture, actually. It's, yeah, it's Acts 21, 20 to 40. And I want you to read it at home, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. Acts 21, that is when they almost killed the Apostle Paul because the Apostle Paul had the audacity, the horrible audacity of taking a Gentile to the temple for a sacrifice. And the doctors of the law in Judaism, and of course the people that follow them, could not understand how come, how come a Greek went to the temple and watched the sacrifices. He did not belong in the temple. That's what they thought. That's what they thought. And if you read Acts, 21, 20 to 40, you will see that the Apostle Paul has to be rescued by the Roman guards. And I'm quite sure that the Apostle Paul spoke uh, Roman, spoke the language Latin, which I have studied and I understand very well. And I taught Latin at the university too. It's a beautiful language. All things come from there. But he was persecuted and he had to tell the Roman guys that he he was also legal because he was a Roman citizen too but the Jews would not hear the Roman uh, I would say not army, but patrol had to save his life because the people were going to kill him for the horrible, horrible mistake of taking a, a Greek person into the temple. They considered that uh, defiling the temple. You know, I have a sister. Uh, that I was a, a young man actually when she was born from another father and uh, I I raised her I raised her I love her and uh, she believes like I do exactly she can't talk to me she cannot she was told by the church, and I don't want to say the name, but everybody that knows what the name is, the group, he, she could not go back to that church if she came and talked to me. If she, if she had any contact with this person, they would ostracize her. They would kick her out of church. Now, give me a break. Give me a break. I don't understand why Americans that were born in liberty and freedom and are usually smart would go for that kind of garbage. Exactly. Amen. It's, it's just garbage. There's no, there's no segregation in God's plan. God loves everybody. And I'll show you folks. Now, I want you to go to Galatians. 
Galatians 3. Okay. Let me see if I have the right one. Twenty. Twenty seven and twenty eight. Twenty seven to twenty nine. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there is neither Jew, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male or female, well that's not true. <laughs> I hope I married a female. <laughs> well, I, I sometimes I don't know what I do, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and in you, if you are in Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise given to Father Abraham. Father Abraham was told that the nations would be blessed by his obedience. Oh, but my sister cannot. She doesn't even call me on the phone. Because if, she, if they find out that she called me on the phone, they will ostracize her. They will excommunicate her. She cannot get into heaven. <laughs> oh, these people are so incredible. How can Americans that know freedom, that have fought for freedom, Americans whose many Americans have died to free the rest of the world, and in a church of God, there is no freedom to talk to your father or your mother or your son because, because your son maybe belongs to another church. Isn't that something? That's not, that's not the way it is with God, folks. That is not the way it is with God. With God, things are different. God looks at you, not your flesh, but your heart. Now, I want to show you a couple of things from this Bible that will actually, I think they do for you by love. The Israelites lived in Egypt a long time. Not true? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So did the Egyptians. Not true? Mm -hmm. I take it the Israelites were white people. What about the Egyptians? They're, they're not white. They're, they're another, another race. Now, an Egyptian could not go into God's temple according to the Jewish rabbis. But I'm going to tell you that the Jewish rabbis read the Old Testament at night with the lights out. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't see the darkness. All right? Uh, Exodus 12 is one of the most important chapters in that Bible. Uh, regarding segregation. <coughs> you know, Exodus 12 is the chapter in the Bible that talks about the Passover. Okay? The Passover. Now, the Passover was the mo one of the most sacred rites in the temple. You know that, don't you? They did not know that the Passover represented Jesus, but they knew by the, by the law of Moses that Passover means to take the sacrifice of the animals and, and just into your heart and love the Lord more. You, and, and it was, you know, the, the, the seven days of unleavened bread and all of those things. 
It was for Israelites only. You know, if, if uh, according to the Jewish authorities and doctors, and maybe you are beginning to understand that Judaism doesn't mean a lot to me because it's not true. Okay, uh, it's it's actually uh, segregationist, and I'm going to prove it to you from the Holy Bible. Now, uh, so these people could keep the, if if a person that was not an Israelite but a Gentile by nature, if uh, they came at that time and wanted to to uh, be part of God's group, the Israelites, they could take the Passover, folks, in the temple that, that they had at that time. They could take the Passover. Did you know that? There was no way in the world. But the Jews, no, the doctors of the law, no, no Gentiles. It would be it would be atrocious for them if they, you know, if they had uh, a person that wasn't of the, of the family of Israel. And you know you are of the family of Israel. You know why? Because through Jesus Christ, you became spiritually an Israelite. But let me, let me read uh, from uh, Exodus 12. This is the right, well, you be ready for a surprise. And I have another one of the same line. Uh, 48. And when a stranger dwells with you and wants to keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep, keep the Passover. For he shall be a na as a native of the land. Have you ever, I know you have, you have read that verse. Have you ever understood it? The strangers, who were the strangers at that time? Egyptians. Huh? The Egyptians and... Anyone the Egyptians, that's right. You could bring that an Egyptian. If the Egyptians wanted to keep the Passover, they could take the Passover and come and offer a sacrifice to God in the temple. And because of, of people in the churches of God that are that don't understand that God is for all people that want to obey. They segregated me in the church. They are segregating me according to, I can't even talk to my, to my beloved sister. And uh, because I'm in this church, and she is, she is over there in another church, and we believe the same things. Amazing. And what is that called? Stupid, Stupid <laughs> segregation. You know, I don't care if you go to other churches of God. You know, if, if they told me that you go, if, you, if they told me that you went to Mass, okay, please listen to this. If you uh, told me that you went to keep, uh, let's say, Christmas with the Mass at 12 o'clock that they have, I would be, I would be, I would be upset. I would be upset. Because that is not part of our religion. We know, we all know that Christmas is a lie. I sang this song for you, didn't I? Christmas is a lot of nonsense. La, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a lot of fun. Christmas is a lot of lies. La, 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 la. It's all, you see, when you depart from God's church and go into paganism, in the name of Christ, you have left 
you are living God's, God's religion, folks. And that would bother me. But um, now I'm going to give you another scripture. And uh, am I might teach you something new today, maybe. I hope so. I want you to go to Isaiah 56, verses 6 to 8. Isaiah 56. Okay. Isaiah 56, verses 6 to 9. How come the Jewish rabbis, the doctors of the law, the specialists in the New in the Old Testament, the people that God put in his temple to teach the people, to teach the world, God never said, This temple is just for you, only for you, Israelites. Make sure that no, no black person goes there. Make sure that no Spanish person, make sure it's just for you. I am the God of the Israelites. He said that. But you become an Israelite when you, when, when you accept Christ. Now, I want, you to, I want to read this. And I think it's the last uh, thing I, I want to read. Um, I want to read more than that. Okay. Isaiah 56, verse 6. And also, the sons of the foreigner who join themselves to the Lord to serve him. Verse 6. And to love the name of the Lord to be his servants. Everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and who does and who holds my covenant, even to them I bring to my holy mountain and make them a joy in my house of prayer. My house of prayer. You know, I would love, would love to sit down with the minister that doesn't allow my sister to call me. I would love to sit down with him and tell you the same thing I said to some people. Oh, I know you have read the, the Bible a lot, but are you sure you had glasses? Are you sure the lights were on? I mean, what you are saying is a mistake. It's just saying, I am human, and you're not. Okay? I've been there. I've been segregated in this country, but it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. That guy, God gave me the intelligence and, and to know that in spite of the fact that I am not a born Israelite, I'm a born again Christian Israelite. And that's what he cares. That's what he cares about. Now, I'm going to give you the last scriptures, okay? Uh, it's going to be Ephesians 2. Okay. Uh, let me get there. Ephesians 2, and I'm going to read several verses here. Are you there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, verse 19. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers or foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Okay? So, God has no strangers. He doesn't look at your skin. He doesn't, he doesn't look, this country has a serious problem that is probably going to end up in a 
war inside. Okay? Because everybody's, everybody's buying, well not everybody, but a lot of people are buying more and more guns. And when you put race and guns in the same place with the spirit of Satan, the devil, call it God's creation, black or you are not an American, I was told. You're not white. Because you were not born in America. I had a master's degree at the time, but I was also when my first wife had died. If it happened to me again nowadays, they will have to call the police because I'll go crazy. <laughs> well, they are crazy. I don't know what I would do. I would probably laugh and say, you know, you know what? I I hate to see <laughs> I hate to see ignoramuses like you, okay? I hate to see ignorant people like you. All right, verse 20. You have been built, you know, it says, of the house of gold, of the house of God. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. Now we'll read, let me see, 22, if I can get there. I don't know what's happening here. Papers. Well, 22 says that the Gentiles, if I can, I don't know why I can't get. Yeah, yeah, yes, okay. Now, 21, oh, let, let, let me go to 19 and put it together and that will be the end of my message. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, I read that, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fit together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also and uh, built for what? The temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Amen. If you have the Holy Spirit and you're trying to obey God, it doesn't matter what the color of your skin is. You know what the color of your soul is? The color of the Holy Spirit. May God bless you. Amen. Amen.